Hello everybody. In this episode of Versus, I'm going to be pitting the Anvil Super Hornet up against the Aegis Saber. And I wanted to state right up front to avoid any confusion that fighters come in three different classifications, which are light, medium, and heavy. The Saber and the Super Hornet are both considered to be small ships when it comes to their size, but they're also designated as being medium class fighters, with the Saber having a specialized focus on stealth. As always, the main purpose of these Versus episodes is to compare two ships that perform the same task, but go about doing it in very different ways. This is because quite often i found that once people start to have a better handle on what career path they want to pursue, be it mining, cargo hauling, combat, or any of the others, they're going to eventually start doing research into what their options are for the kinds of ships that perform those types of roles. And eventually, they're going to focus their attention down to a few choices based on what kind of career that they're interested in, what their level of commitment to the game is going to be, and what resources they have to fall back on. These videos are meant to act as a guide for people to reference who are researching a specific ship that they're interested in owning and want to hear more about it, as well as being able to hear more about what the closest competitor to that ship is and how they stack up against one another. This way, hopefully, players can make a more informed decision when it comes to purchasing a ship. In this episode, I'm going to be focusing in on two of the best medium-class fighters in the game. And anyone who's interested in acquiring a ship for dogfighting or short-range escort work is eventually going to cast their attention onto one of these two ships. Over the course of this video, I'm going to be going over what their differences are with regards to their components, weapons loadout, performance, modularity, and then finishing things off by talking about why someone would want to own one of these ships over the other. If there was ever a single signature ship in Star Citizen, it would be the Anvil Hornet. Its namesake comes from the F-36 Hornet from the original Wing Commander series. In lore, the Hornet was released in 2806, and was meant to be a replacement for the Avenger. At the time, the Avenger was the military's premier dogfighter, but the F-7A Hornet quite literally blew it out of the sky and soon became the new go-to ship for the UEE Navy. They've since gone on to develop some variants on the F-7A Hornet like the F-7C, the Tracker, the Ghost, the Spitfire, and the Super Hornet. There's also an F-7A Mark II variant which is being looked at as the next generation of Hornet fighters. The newest variation that's based on the Super Hornet is the F-7C M Heartseeker, which is the same basic ship as the Super Hornet except that it comes with a uniquely tailored loadout and a custom paint job. The Sabre is the premier stealth fighter from Aegis Dynamics and is a tried and true vessel that's been in production since the days of the Messer regime. It holds up to the tradition that all Aegis ships seem to embody which is having everything you need in just the right amounts. The Sabre may not have as rich a history as the Hornet, but I'd be hard pressed to think of another ship that does. The Sabre also has its own particular variant called the Comet which comes with a digital camouflage skin and a unique loadout, but other than that it's statistically the same as the stock Sabre in every other way. Both the Super Hornet and the Saber's loadout consist entirely of small components. The main differences between them is that the Hornet only has one power plant while the Saber has two, and the Hornet only has two shield generators while the Saber has three. The single advantage that the Hornet has over the Saber when it comes to components is that it's been outfitted with one more fuel tank than the Saber has. Both ships are compatible with military grade components, which the Super Hornet comes with by default, while the Saber comes stock with a mixture of military grade and stealth components. Since the new flight mechanic was added, the chasm that once existed between the Super Hornet and the Saber has narrowed down considerably. The Saber handles a lot like a light fighter. Its top speed is 1,235. It's very quick to accelerate and it can go from a full burn to a complete stop without overheating the engines. The type of maneuvering thrusters that it uses in their placement is very close to what you'd find on a Gladius. The Hornet's handling is more sluggish when compared to the Sabres, which tends to be anywhere from 10 to 20 meters a second slower in nearly every category. Its top speed is 1,228, and its ability to accelerate and stop is a bit slower than the Sabres. Both ships have been designed for atmospheric flight. They have a long wingspan for their body size and are aerodynamically shaped, although the Sabres' chassis is a lot more streamlined than the Hornet's is. 
Both ships have a certain degree of modularity about them. The Hornet's modularity revolves around what it can do with its second seat and the alternative options that it can use instead of the ball turret. Having a second seat means that you can bring along a co-pilot that could be put in charge of managing the shields, they could act as your navigator, or they could take direct control of the turret and make full use of its 360 degree range of movement. The extra seat could also be used to carry personnel. So an entrepreneuring Super Hornet pilot can make an extra buck by transporting a passenger whenever they travel to a new location. It was originally planned for the Super Hornet to be able to be used for bounty hunting. This would be done by swapping out the co-pilot seat for what they're referring to as a secure seat that's capable of holding a single prisoner. Nothing has been said about this option since the brochure for it was originally released, but hopefully we'll be hearing more as they continue to develop the bounty hunting career path. The Super Hornet's other modular element is the ball turret. This piece of hardware can be removed and replaced with a number of additional options that includes the store all big box. This item comes stock with the Hornet F7C and has a cargo capacity of two SCUs. Or you could replace the turret with a tracker's Willops Long Range Radar Array, which can exponentially increase your passive and active scanning capabilities. The Sabre isn't very modular in terms of gameplay options, but it does have a lot of range when it comes to how it can be configured for different types of combat. It has the potential to be not only stealthy, but it could be a rather powerful dogfighter as well based on what you outfit it with. By default, it comes stocked with stealth components that can help to reduce the ship's signature down to minimum levels, which will allow you to be able to get extremely close to an enemy and remain unnoticed before you start your attack run. And it should also grant you the ability to just as easily disappear from their radar while you're trying to escape. The argument to this is, okay, so why can't you just outfit the Super Hornet with stealth components and use it as a stealth ship? Well, there's no reason why you can't. But there is going to be one big difference between these two ships when it comes to configuring them for covert ops. First and foremost is that the Sabre has been built from the ground up to be a dedicated stealth ship. Its cross-section has been reduced down to a bare minimum which presents the smallest amount of surface space for an enemy radar to pick up, and for missiles that use your CS which is your cross-section to lock onto. When you add that to the additional benefits that the stealth components brings, then the Sabre is going to end up having an edge when it comes to stealth that the Hornet isn't going to be able to equal. This is going to also be true of the Hornet Ghost, which may have the Void Armor, which is capable of diffusing scans, but also has the same blocky shaped chassis as the Super Hornet, which gives it a much bigger cross-section. So in essence, any ship that's been given an aftermarket refit to make it more stealthy is going to have a lower signature than before, but it isn't going to be nearly as good as a stealth ship that's been specifically designed for it. The Super Hornet is described as being a tank. It may not be as nimble when compared to the Sabre, but it's the most heavily armored out of all the Hornets, and it's designed to be able to take a pounding like some kind of mini vanguard and still be able to keep fighting. The Sabre, on the other hand, is not going to be as tough, and it's going to have to rely more on its shields and its ability to avoid detection to keep it safe. But the thing about the Sabre is that it's going to be more successful at being transformed into a brawler than the Super Hornet is at being transformed into a stealth ship. Since it's a military vessel, you can strip out all the stealth components and replace them with ones that are military grade. So if you upgrade its shields from shimmers to all stops, and its power plants from sonic lights to the regulus, then you'll end up seeing a significant performance increase in its power output and its defensive abilities. The Sabre won't have the same level of armor protection or the same hull strength as the Hornet, which means that you're going to have to alter your tactics a bit when you're dogfighting. Despite the performance increase that it gets from a military grade refit, once the Sabre's shields are down, it's going to have to disengage long enough for them to recharge before you can reacquire the target and continue fighting. While the Hornet's going to be able to remain in the thick of it for longer periods of time and can afford to press its attack well after its shields have been knocked out, which in a lot of situations can mean the difference between a quick victory or a long drawn out battle. And by default the Super Hornet is equipped with a fully gimbaled loadout. This is mainly thanks to the canard and ball turret that it comes stock with. For weapons, it has two size 2 guns on the ball turret and one size 2 on each of the wings, with two size 1s mounted onto the canard turret. The current meta for the game when it comes to dogfighting has been to gimbal a ship's weapons and use the gimbal assist feature to maximize your damage potential. Gimbals are definitely the way to go when it comes to dogfighting, but having a fixed loadout can be more effective when going up against larger ships. You can replace the Super Hornet's canard turret and the two wing mounted weapons for three size 3 fixed guns and the ball turret for a size 4 weapon. This is going to give a significant increase to the amount of DPS that the ship can dish out and gives it enough firepower to take on medium and even large sized vessels. This is because larger ships have a tendency to be slower, they often have blind spots that their turrets can't cover, and they provide a nice fat target for you to shoot at. So maneuvering isn't going to be as important as the amount of DPS that you can do when you're going up against a ship that's bigger than you are. 
By default, the Saber's weapon loadout consists of four size three fixed guns, which is a really good setup to have when it comes to hunting medium to large size targets. It used to come with two gimbaled and two fixed weapons, which is called a split loadout. This essentially is the worst kind to have since it can end up giving you two separate targeting pips. You can easily swap out its four size threes for all size two weapons that are all mounted onto gimbals. That way you can use the gimbal assist feature and have the same advantages that so many other ships have when it comes to dogfighting. This type of setup has become the preferred loadout for going up against other medium or other light fighters. There's also a certain range of customization options that you'll find with these two ships when it comes to how you can configure their missile loadouts. The Sabre by default has four size 3 missiles, two of which are IR and the other two are CS missiles. The ordnance are mounted into two missile racks that are held within a set of bomb bay doors. They can be swapped out from their current configuration and replaced with racks that hold four size 2s each for a total of eight size 2 missiles. While the Hornet comes stock with eight size 1 IR missiles that are mounted onto two racks. You can change its configuration for each rack to hold a single size 3 missile or two size 2s, which in total would be two size 3 missiles or four size 2s. My personal preference for the Super Hornet is to replace this default setup with racks that can hold a set of two size 2 Rattlers each. So in conclusion, why would you want a Saber over a Hornet? Well, anyone who's interested in stealth gameplay will immediately gravitate towards the Saber. It can be used for ambush tactics where you use the ship's inherently low signature to hide in the shadows as you creep up on your target and get in as close as possible before you attack. And if at any time you need to let your shields recharge, you can disappear back into the darkness of the void to recover. The Saber is also going to be the best choice to use as an escort ship for other stealth vessels like the Eclipse. That way you can provide protection for the bomber without jeopardizing its ability to run silent as it approaches a target. It's an overall well-rounded dogfighter that's single-mindedly dedicated to what it does. It's equally good at stealth tactics as it is at straight-up dogfighting. The Super Hornet may have better armor, but the Saber has better shields, which is preferable for a lot of people since shields can recharge after they take damage, but armor can't. The Saber's extra number of components are going to provide multiple levels of redundancy that's going to give it a higher resistance to distortion-based weapons. It also makes it more reliable and less likely to leave a pilot stranded due to component failure. Because even if one of your power plants fails, you'll still have another that should function long enough for you to be able to get back to a safe haven. Whereas with something like the Hornet, if its one power plant ever fails, then you're screwed. The Saber also has the ability to dictate the terms that a battle's fought on. For instance, at any time during combat, you can put enough distance between itself and the target to break the radar lock that the enemy has on your ship, and then simply disappear into the shadows. They can remain silent until its shields have recovered, and once it does, the Saber can strike at them again from a more advantageous position. And it can keep doing this over and over again, chipping away at the target till it's finally dead. And this is just one out of many tactics that employ stealth that a Saber pilot can use, but it is a very effective one. And consequently, why would you want a Hornet over a Saber? One term that you're going to be hearing over and over again with the Hornet is going to be Brawler. It'll be the ship of choice for people who have a more straightforward approach to fighting other vessels. Unfortunately, there's still two elements with the Super Hornet that prevents it from truly shining at this point. The first is not being able to use blades to automate its remote turret. Once you can do that, the turret could act as a point defense system that's specifically set aside to take out incoming missiles. You can also use a blade to set the dorsal turret to auto-target enemies. This would allow it to fire on any ship that approaches the Hornet from behind or its flanks and be able to keep firing on them even after they've moved out of the range of the main guns. The last thing about the Super Hornet that's really holding it back and preventing it from becoming the kind of ship that it's meant to be is that the armor system hasn't been truly added into the game yet. And for a long time now, designers have increased the hit points of a ship in order to compensate for this. But for anyone who's played a game that has armor as a gameplay mechanic, you'll know that there's no substitution for having true damage reducing abilities. The Hornet series is meant to feel tanky, and the Super Hornet is supposed to have the thickest armor among any of the ships in the Hornet series. And for now the Hornets don't feel like they live up to this reputation like they're supposed to. After the armor feature is implemented into the game the way that they want it to be, the Super Hornet should end up feeling and acting like the flying tank that it's supposed to be. Armor has been one of the more overlooked aspects of a ship, and it's going to be the factor that determines how much damage it takes from physical impacts. This is going to include ramming into or being rammed by things like other ships, asteroids, and even the surface of a planet. Heavily armored craft are going to be able to shrug these kinds of impacts off with minimal damage, while other ships that rely on their shields for protection are going to get wrecked. 
Also, heavy armor is going to slow a ship down, but it's also going to provide protection that requires no energy and is going to persist even after its shields have been knocked out. Shields tend to generate from three quarters to half of your total signature, and being able to power them down and still be protected is going to be a kind of stealth maneuver in and of itself. And the other thing about the Super Hornet is the dorsal turret. This can be operated by the co-pilot and used to attack enemies that are located in a 360 degree circle around the ship. The pilot can also take direct control of the turret and fly the ship in one direction and still be able to shoot in another. There is one final reason why someone would want a Hornet over a Saber, which has to do with role-playing and the immersion factor. The Hornet is undoubtedly Star Citizen's version of the X-Wing and the Viper from Battlestar Galactica all rolled into one. Even the first person view from the cockpit seems to give off the feeling that you could be flying either one of these ships while still managing to put its own unique spin onto it. It's the first time that I've seen struts used in a way that doesn't hinder the pilot's view, but instead is used to add to the overall aesthetics of the interior. It also has one of the more unique and functional MFD display layouts among any of the other fighter craft. Both of these ships are amazing medium class fighters, and so far they're the two best that are available in the game. These ships represent the two extremes when it comes to dogfighters. On one side you have the Hornet and its into the fray attitude when it comes to battle. It's got heavier armor, more guns that are all inherently gimbaled, and it has a lot of extra points when it comes to gameplay. It's going to be the ship of choice for people who like to face an enemy head on and keep pressing the battle till it's won. Well, on the other hand you have the Saber, which is more of a dedicated fighter craft that relies heavily on its greater dexterity and stronger shields. It can be a ninja or an assassin, but either way it's going to be a ship for people who aren't afraid to be more strategic and methodic in their approach to combat. Well that's going to be it for this episode of Versus. I'd like to thank everybody for liking and subscribing to the channel. And I'd like to thank my patrons for making it possible for me to be able to continue to create new content. If you'd like to become a patron, there'll be a link to my Patreon site in the description of this video. And trust me, every little bit helps and is appreciated. I've been your host, Law of the West. Thanks for watching, and take care.